I'm kind of excited today because I'm near a Tommy's car wash. This is the only car wash chain I have ever learned of that you can fit a dually truck in. Because usually when you go through those conveyor belt kind of car washes, it's not wide enough for the back end of a dually. But this one specifically is, see this round kind of tunnel that they have? It doesn't have a conveyor belt that grabs your wheels like a regular car wash. It's like a flat belt and that wide circle leaves enough room for the back of the dually so you can take your truck right through there and it's not any extra cost. Their cheapest wash is $8. Um, they're just in the Philadelphia orbit here, but we come through here a lot, so I am definitely gonna keep this in mind for future car washes, truck washes. She looks beautiful. come down to Dover, Delaware. We just got a few days in Delaware to see some highlights and Dover is the state capital. Delaware was the first state in the United States after the Revolutionary War. So there's some really great colonial history here. This uh, Northern Delaware was settled, I think in the mid 1600s. So it's very, very old and feels a lot like we were just saying, William, Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia and around Philadelphia. It's very uh, old buildings and like, nice brick sidewalks, cobblestone streets. It's really pretty down here. Now we just found out that Delaware has not a national park, but a national historical park. It's relatively new. It was only created in 2013 um, because Delaware realized that they were the only state that did not have any national park units in it. So a national park unit is something that's, um, you know, run by the National Park Service. Um, it doesn't have to be a park, it could be a historical site, battlefield, that kind of stuff. So the Delaware First State National Historical Park consists of different buildings, mostly buildings, and then there is a, a scenic byway uh, in northern Delaware, um, like a scenic drive that's part of it too. So this is the old state house. It was the original state house that was the first capitol building here, built in 1791. And it's part of the um, historical park, so we're gonna just run in before they close and check it out. Where do you stay in your RV locally? Right uh, now we are at someone's house um, up in Townsend. Oh, we got so lucky at the old state house. They were just closing, but the guy let us in for a few minutes. And this is, we were the only people there. He gave us a private tour of the whole state house. We saw the house side and the Senate side, and he told us the history of the building. Here, th there are some buildings around the green here where historic events happen, like the reading of the Declaration of Independence and the reading of the ratification of the first state. So here's a little plaque in the tavern, Golden Fleece Tavern, where... Um, the state reading happened. So, wow, what a what a gorgeous little neighborhood and uh, walking today. And then just behind the old state house, a little ways is the new Delaware State House. This is actually the state capitol building. They call it the Delaware Legislative Hall instead of calling it a state capitol. And here's a re reproduction of the Liberty Bell. I know that reproductions of this were sent around the country like in, this one says it was built in 1950, but I think around the bicentennial, 1976, a bunch of these reproductions were kind of distributed to different states, and you can see them sometimes. Not every state capital has them, but it's nice to see this one here, and it has the, the um, etching on it about the, the words of liberty when the bell was rung in Philadelphia at the Revolutionary War. <laughs>
Hey, we had a great quick stop in Delaware, saw some really fun things in Dover and uh, elsewhere in the state. And now we are heading a little bit farther south to Southern Maryland for the next three days. And since we're going between Boondockers Welcomes and we did, weren't at an RV park, we've had to find a dump station to clear, clear out our tanks. And I think this is the first time that we've ever um, like hold over just to dump somewhere and then keep going. We've done it at RV parks before with their dump stations as we're leaving, but never like had to go to a totally different location. So in Delaware, the Bally's Casino, which is wherever, over here, um, they used to have RV parking in their parking lot overnight, so they have a dump station here. They no longer allow overnight RV parking, but the dump station still works. I called ahead. Um, to make sure it was still open. And yesterday, actually, when we were down here in Dover, we drove by just to check it out, make sure we could get our RV in here. So this is great. We're gonna dump our black and gray and then get going to Maryland. We're gonna go out that way anyways. We're actually gonna move the RV over to this other side because this sewer pipe is really unusual and it's very high off the ground. Yeah. I don't think yeah. it's high enough so to drain. That's that's below this, even though I could put the hose down in, but this is almost, uh, I don't know, Six inches higher. Six to 12 inches higher. On this yeah. side, so we're gonna put the RV we're around. We're gonna leave to this that side. way anyway, so yeah. I'll just pull it around. All right. No biggie. Okay, that's good. I like that we added this gate on here. <laughs> that's still closed. A little unusual there's nothing to plug that into so we'll just have to all right the end of this i put down inside there a bit so it's even lower than the outlet here and that's flowing really well and we figured we'd dump our black even though we've been using it only for two or three days three days because we're going right to another boondockers welcome situation so that at least gets back to mostly zero and we don't have to pull the weight around too which is another reason to dump is so you're not hauling extra weight we added this on I don't know, a few weeks ago, a month or two, something like that. So you can wash your hands out here. And I have that. Fast orange. Yeah. Pretty stuff. It's got that orange pumice. <laughs> nice. All right, shut it off. Arrived at this boondockers welcome and he said he wanted us to back down this driveway which is pretty long <laughs> we're gonna see what we can do Look, you hardly ever see this at a boondockers welcome. An external shower house. No toilet, but you could take a shower in there to save your gray tank for a little bit. We're not gonna use it, but that is a super nice feature. And the, these people also have this really nice patio set up. It's got a propane fireplace, some firewood, um, and a fire pit, and a nice picnic table to hang out at. And they even let you throw away your garbage here, which hardly ever happens. Very nice. Plus they have 30 amp hookup and water. Wow, it's so amazing. And also I forgot to say they have a washer and dryer out here um, on the patio free to use. Amazing um, amenities here. Yeah, it's fun. We spent, well, I spent a good half hour, four or five minutes chatting with the guy too when we first got here, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, he likes to chat. <laughs> the other guy likes to chat and Jason likes to chat. Yeah, I've known to <laughs> chat. Go down. We're starting our exploring of Southern Maryland at the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad National Historical Park. 
uh, it is a national park unit, which is very fun. And this area is where Harriet Tubman was born and uh, grew up enslaved until she escaped from here in, when she was 27 years old, which would have been in the 1840s or early 50s. Um, so she, of course, is one of the main conductors of the Underground Railroad. She didn't start the Underground Railroad, but she was one of the most successful and famous of the conductors. So after she escaped when she was 27, she came back 13 different times and snuck into Southern Maryland to free 70 of her family and friends and help them escape to freedom up through Delaware and into Pennsylvania and up to Canada. Um, we knew some things about Harriet Tubman because she eventually settled in Auburn, New York, which is near Rochester, New York, where we raised our kids and lived for a long time. So I had a lot of uh, knowledge about her history up there, but I didn't really even know that she was from Maryland or what her history down here was. So the visitor center here has been very interesting. They got have some great little films in there and an interpretive center, very worth the visit and it's free. Um, and then they've got this little interpretive path that's just like three quarters of a mile around the visitor center. So it's a beautiful day and now we're having some fun exploring down in this area. There is an, also a Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad scenic byway that you can drive from Maryland up through Delaware, uh, like up to Philadelphia. And I saw a lot of signs for it when we were in Delaware a few days ago. Um, so it's, it's from here and it's tracing the route that she would take the escaped slaves up through Delaware and uh, up to Pennsylvania. So I didn't really understand when we were in Delaware what was the purpose of the path, but it is the actual path that she traveled with the escaped slaves. So not very far from our boondockers welcome is this cool monument to the beginning of the Mason-Dixon line. So the Mason-Dixon creates the borders around Delaware and Maryland and Pennsylvania. There was a border dispute in the mid 1700s and that's why the the borders of those states are very sharp lines they don't follow rivers or anything delaware has like this really sharp corner at the bottom and then pennsylvania is straight across on the bottom um so it it was originally surveyed to do that border dispute but the reason there was a border dispute could have been because of slavery issues on either side of that line today we use the term mason dixon line to kind of refer to the difference between the north and the south that existed during the Civil War. So north of the Mason-Dixon line is say, free states, south was generally slave states. Um, so this is a very cool spot, but the reason that I came over here is because there's a geocache nearby, so I wanna see if I can grab it. In pre-revolutionary colonial America, these monuments marked the southwest corner of the three lower counties of the Delaware, at the time part of the Pennsylvania colony. So the two little stones were the original marker of the of the state line or county lines in 1750. And then Mason and Dixon reconfirmed the coordinates in 1764 with this larger marker. So this is a Delaware over here. And then across the road, across the street is Maryland. That's the corner of the state. Mm -hmm. All right, it's supposedly the geocache is up here, let's see. <laughs> Found it. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> 
All right, we'll sign it. Oh, well, that was a fun one because it was a fun sight. However, that geocache is technically in Delaware and I already had a Delaware cache, so now we still have to find one for Maryland. <laughs> All right, today we are heading east in Maryland over to Ocean City, Maryland. You might remember in our last video, we went to Ocean City, New Jersey. Here's the counterpart um, down south, and we're gonna see if we can get a Maryland geocache over there and maybe do a little scenic drive. America's a cool small town. So a while ago, I came across some articles on Facebook um, about cool little towns to visit in each state. So there was a couple different articles. So I marked all of them on my Google map as a want to go. And just whenever we are near one of them, we hop by and see one. So the town for Maryland was the town of Berlin or Berlin. I don't know how they pronounce it. Um, and it happens to be Connecticut is, it was Berlin. Berlin, Connecticut they, they is pronounced, pronounced it the weird. right way, which is now I don't know. My brain can't do it, right? <laughs> oh, it smells so good right here next to this restaurant. Um, but it's on the way to Ocean City. So we just stopped off here. And wow, what a super cute little town. And it, even the, the slogan for the town is the coolest small town in America. oatmeal raisin but this one has pecans so it sounded pretty good. It's chewy. the arm up there. You think you can see where the, uh, where the cut job happened? Ah. In the patchwork. I, mean, so I think that hand has been twisted and told with the ice cream cone as well. Twisted 90 degrees. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's We've to seen other ice cream men with a hand like that. Surrey bikes. It looks a lot like the Ocean City, New Jersey boardwalk. <laughs> I think boardwalks tend to have a theme. <laughs> a little more people here today though because it's the weekend and it's a really warm day. Might be more population down this way. Think. Well, no? but this town is smaller though. Ocean City, Maryland is half the size of Ocean City, New Jersey. No, uh, yeah. And I think it's because it's, it's the weekend. Yeah. Warmer season too. Yeah. We're getting further south. Let's, we're looking for some Coors frozen custard because so we really liked it uh, up in New Jersey. Found my Maryland geocache here on the boardwalk. <laughs> Sometimes when they're in busy places, they're hard because you have to be stealthy about getting them. 
that's the fun one, right down at the very end of the Ocean City boardwalk. a nice boardwalk stroll plus when you come to these coastal towns in the off season all the parking in the town is free that's another nice perk it's another muffler man a pirate at the jolly roger amusement park in ocean city maryland this is a good one he's painted really nice okay, let me get in front of the sun here Oh, now you can't see him. <laughs> He's got a really good paint job. Oh, I see, it's just the neck. 